Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to saw straight using a handsaw. Hope you enjoy. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to be using a rip saw because that it's going to be the most difficult cut and the longest cut you're going to do. So it's going to be the one that you're going to struggle the most with. So today I've got this probably about 60 mil thick piece of just construction pine here. Now the techniques you're going to learn today, it doesn't really matter the thickness of the timber. Perhaps thinner timber is easier to cut, so it's a little bit easier to keep straight because there's just not as much timber that you're cutting through. But no matter the thickness of the timber, the techniques are still the same. So when it comes to hand sawing, the first thing we need to look at is obviously the technique. And that is going to affect how straight you can hand saw the most. Now it comes down to how we grip the hand saw and the movement of your body through the wrist elbow and shoulder. Now when it comes to the wrist, elbow and shoulder you want them all in alignment so you're cutting nice and straight. If you start to wobble like this and your elbow flicks out obviously you can see your saw is going to move like this. Now if you're going to hold your saw with a full fist grip like this the, the saw flops all over the place and it's easy to move. Now the correct way to grip is with your index finger faced forward like this and you're actually using a three finger grip on the handle and the weight is taken by the little horns on the bottom here of your hand and the little horn on the back of the handle here. That's why especially the bottom horn is very valuable when hand sawing and why you'll see a lot of restoration projects restoring the horns. Other than the aesthetics it is actually needed to hand saw correctly. So now that we've got our hand held correctly, we've got our elbow pretty close to our side, which means it's in line with our shoulder. So now that we're moving, we can get a nice straight saw cut like this. Now it's going to take quite a bit of practice to actually get to a position where you can do this and you don't wander too much. It took me quite a long time. It took me over a year until I was comfortable cutting straight to a line. But if you're having problems initially, the best thing that I can suggest that you do is actually do some practice cutting with a handsaw until you feel comfortable doing it. The other thing is, is leave a little bit more of a gap between your line and your handsaw to allow for the discrepancies and allow for more material waste when you're first beginning and doing a project. If we're going to cut to a line, first we need a line on the piece of wood. So off camera I've gone ahead and just whacked a line on this uh, using my marking gauge and then a pencil. So we're good to start for this demo. Now the first thing you have to know when you're doing that is which side of the line are you cutting on because you obviously have a waist side and that's the side you want to do what you're cutting on. Now normally I would leave a gap when doing that and then planing back to the line so I know that it's dead accurate. So I always like to have a little bit of waist that I can play with when doing that and a little bit of discrepancy to work with. But obviously we don't want to waste more material than we need to when it comes to timber because it can be expensive. So I'm going to show you how we can get right close to that line and stay as close to it as possible, which is what we want. So in this case, on this piece, I'm going to make the waist on this wide side over here. And the narrow side is going to be a strip that we're going to be using for whatever. It doesn't really matter. In this case, this is the strip we're going to be keeping. So our waist side is going to be on this large side. So I like to just put a couple of crosses so I remind myself as I'm turning the piece around where my waist is. And that's usually done with a cross or, or something like that. I use the little crosses. And you'll see me having done the same thing when I've done my dovetails. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. As you can see here, I've got my timber in here and I've got it angled away. Now, what I like to do when I'm hand sawing is actually have the saw angled down. Now, if you're just beginning, having it up on an angle like this means that you can run straight through it, but still have that similar effect to having your saw angled. Now, the advantage of having the saw angled when you're running through a piece of wood is because it's on an angle, if you see here, you end up with more contact in the piece. So it's actually easier to keep the saw straight because once you've got the saw curve, 
the saw sort of runs in that kerf and it actually is easier to keep it straight to where you're cutting. So to start sawing here, obviously here's my line. I'm going to do as you've seen me do multiple times and come onto the top here, pull back a couple of times, right on the corner between the line that's on the top here and the line that's on the face here and I'm right next to it in this case. So I've made a little notch here for me to start. Before I start, I'm going to bring it down in the saw vise here. And that means there's less vibration and it's at a better height for me to actually chop. So I don't have to angle the saw down much. Now, because of my height, I still have to angle it down a little bit when it's like this. I could put it a little lower in the vise. However, that poses its own problems. So now that I've got that notch, I'm going to come back in and I'm obviously going to start sawing. I'm still going to keep my thumb just on the inside here as a little bit of a guide as I start until I've established a nice curve. Now you can start across the top first, but I like to just angle it like this and we cut through like this. Now I'm keeping an eye on the line on the top here and here as I'm, I'm starting to go through. So now that I've established the kerf on this side, I like to turn it around and do the same on the other side. Just to make sure that when the saw comes through to start with, it's going to be in the correct spot. And you can counteract things a little bit if need be. So I'm going to come back in that line that was on the top here. And I've just taken it down a touch here, right next to it. So we've got that sort of established right the way across on both sides. So now that that's done, I'm going to be sawing through, alternating each side, four or five inches, and then I'll turn around and do the same from the other side. <laughs> So I'm hitting my bench here, so now's a good time to turn it around. Now, that little whipping sound you're hearing is actually the saw plate flapping around a little bit. It doesn't really matter, um, it's just because I'm going relatively quick with it. And some of them seem to flap around a little bit more than others. But it doesn't affect it because it's just vibration in the plate as you're sawing through and then bringing it back. It's just getting stuck in the, the saw curve a little bit. And then we turn it around like this. Remembering that our waist is on this side here so we can continue along down here for a little bit further. So if you keep that perfect this entire time, there's going to be no problems and you'll be able to cut right through there, nice and straight. But what happens if you start wavering in that kerf? So let me try and mimic moving away from the line here and let me show you how we can correct it. So you see here now we've got quite a distance away from that line now. We've come out three, four millimeters. So how do we correct that? Do we keep sawing and try to correct it? No. What we do is we come back in to just before it starts to move away. And you're using the side of these teeth so you're set and you're sort of making yourself a little shelf on top of where you've moved away. And once that's done, you can come back here and you can see where it was on this side and where we have and we've corrected it. Another way that you can do it and that involves flexing the saw in the direction and I have used this, but it doesn't work very well. The way that I showed you just there with actually moving back to the top of your cut and correcting it is always going to be your best bet. 
Now, if you just add a little bit, you're obviously making little corrections as you're sawing, and you can make little tiny flexes on it to correct minuscule amounts. So I'm talking like one millimeter out as you're sawing. That is all right. But as soon as you start to go two, three, four millimeters out as you're sawing, it could either be the set on your saw, which I'll talk about in another video, or it's just that you've guided it incorrectly, so you better come back up, start, as I showed you there, to restart your curve. So I'm going to get back to sawing this so you can see how we go right the way through. When you get to this stage and you've got a little bit left, obviously clamping your face vise is going to jam it up so you can't saw. So you can either hold it in the side of your vise like this, where it goes off the edge of your jaw and saw right down to the bottom. Or, if you're doing it this way, you can bring it right up so you're barely on it, and then you can actually just turn the, it over the other way and saw back. Now, I prefer having it off the edge if you can, but in a situation like this, you can put it back up so it's barely any of it is actually holding in the jaw. And then you have very little material holding it, and you can just come along and snap it off like this. So they are the two ways that I use in terms of cutting the, the material when you get right down to the end. The only problem with snapping it like this is that as you can see here, it runs off, so you could waste material. So I just want to give you a, a quick close-up of this so you can see how much of the line I have actually left while hand sawing like this. So it might be a little difficult to see, but we have about a millimeter here. And you can clearly see that dark line right the way up on this side. This side, part of the line disappeared here when the saw wandered a little bit. But for the most part, you can see the line here. And then the line sort of disappears here, which is not ideal. But the edge is still just there. Now, that might not be great when it comes to hand planing it. So you might thin in the material a little bit. But in most cases, that is not going to be a huge deal breaker. So I'm going to bring it in here to my vise, grab a chisel and just take off that raised bit. Just so it's not too much in the way of the hand plane. Correcting that high spot first. And now if we have a nice close look at this, we're complete. And because we had a good reference when we started, this will be all nice and square now. And you can see that we're down to the line on both sides. So there you have your perfectly cut and dimensioned piece of timber. So as you could see there, after this was all hand planed up, it's looking pretty good. And I think that it's really important technique to learn to be able to use a handsaw, even if you are somebody out there that is a hybrid worker and uses a table saw, because you're gonna come across some situation where you're gonna need to handsaw and you want to be able to use your handsaw properly to get the job done. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing below. It really does help the channel out. And if you would like to support me a little bit further, please check out my Patreon. Links in the description below. And check out these two videos here, which will help you out in your hand tool woodworking journey. Bye for now.